a greater degree than what is seen here on the cast. Here the pad of the thumb seems to be facing more or less the same direction as the other fingers. Now that rotation of the thumb is a very human characteristic that allows us to oppose our digits to the thumb. Suggests uh, a more ape-like condition which we see in other examples of hand prints such as this one. These mismatched prints seem to pose more questions than answers. Monster Quest is searching for an unknown beast that is said to roam the swamps and riverbanks near Falk, Arkansas. Eyewitness accounts of the beast became the basis for The Legend of Boggy Creek, a movie that played in drive-in theaters in the early 1970s. Tourists continue to visit the area in hopes of catching a glimpse of the creature. The Monster Quest expedition to the area extends to the Wachita Mountains in Oklahoma, where biologist Alton Higgins discovered a large set of tracks. We'd been in there for days and never saw anybody else. And uh, we just stopped again like we had done, you know, dozens of times before. And uh, I saw a little kind of a concentration of, of leaves in this uh, kind of flat, muddy area. And I bent down and picked out the leaves, and as I picked out the leaves, a track was revealed. So there were 16-inch tracks, uh, pretty deeply impressed in the, in the mud. Uh, parallel in the track were some uh, bear tracks, uh, an adult and a, and a young bear. So, you know, you could make a side-by-side -side comparison. Higgins and investigator Jeff Davidson are contending with the heavy underbrush in search of physical evidence. Man, out and look at all this green briar. Yeah, that stuff is nasty. I've already got some cuts on my arm from it. They come across some well-defined bear tracks. Yeah, this is a pretty good sized bear. Pretty clear impressions. If this rear foot had come down into this forepaw impression. The bear prints show how they can often be mistaken. The track. In the absence of clear claw marks, you see how that would look clearly like a humanoid footprint. The team, including Mark Peterson and Daryl Collier, meet at base camp to review the photos from their camera traps. On the pond, we've got coons, and we got one coon real close, and then he climbed a tree and pulled the whole tree right in front of the camera. It's kind of neat. Up in the tree here. Oh, okay. You can just pull it down, I think. The two cameras transmit photos in real time around the clock to a computer at home base, even when the group is on reconnaissance. And then the next night, we've got this bobcat. Look at the clarity. Very crisp. In Boggy Creek, Rick Knoll sets up a separate camera trap that employs different technology a camera with a larger angle of view. I'm really excited about this 360 degree lens that when it's attached to a, a regular digital camera and with an eyepiece trip, will actually act a, as a camera trap. The camera allows the team to see the entire area, allowing them to have a better vantage point on anything that might trip it. The computer software allows the photo to be unwrapped for viewing. Noel quickly finds the amount of information from one photo can be overwhelming. Wow, this one picture by the swamp. We'll have to hone down our way of determining what trip these cameras for future use. Just so much data in here. The team has found some unusual tracks. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Hey guys, come take a look at this. Well, it definitely looks like a track. The footprint measures 13 inches long, with the heel approximately 5 inches. The ball of the foot is even wider. Wow. Five and a half. It's difficult to determine just what could have made the tracks. Black bear are ruled out here, as they are not indigenous to this area. And it is not likely a human bootprint, as the impression clearly has digits. 
Unfortunately, the group realizes the track is too old for further analysis. The team is still hopeful that the scat they gathered earlier will offer some clue to the swamp stalker. Scat is a pretty commonly used sample uh, for um, animal identification. Dr. Vassal Tkach studies parasitology at the University of North Dakota. His analysis will include checking for parasites as well as DNA analysis. First thing that you look is the freshness of the sample in which DNA would not be degraded. So the, the older the sample, the more the DNA is, and it uh, creates difficulties in its extraction and processing. A variety of things, including ultraviolet rays, may cause degradation, as well as growth of bacteria and fungi. From the very beginning, look at the potential uh, age of the sample. I decided that I will go with the uh, mitochondrial DNA. I've chosen two genes as targets, and both have been heavily sequenced by uh, zoologists, biologists, fish and wildlife uh, biologists. So there's a lot of these sequences available for different mammals. So the major steps are first, extraction of DNA out of your sample. Second step is amplification of your target gene. The amplification process increases the number of copies of the gene sequence selected. The DNA sample is placed in a machine called a thermocycler. Increased heat causes a reaction called a polymer chain reaction, or PCR. Throughout the process, the sample undergoes a series of cleanup and purification. Finally, the last step before final analysis is obtaining a DNA sequence. When you want to identify an animal, so you prefer a region that has been already sequenced and is known for all other potential animals. DNA analysis may finally prove to be concrete evidence of the swamp stalker of Boggy Creek. Monster Quest has traveled to Falk, Arkansas where people claim to have seen a huge creature with a barrel chest and measuring seven to eight feet tall. They call it the Swamp Stalker of Boggy Creek. This man says the creature stalked his hunting blind. This hunter says the creature grabbed his arrowhead before running off into the forest. And this Bigfoot researcher claims it suddenly leapt across his path. The expedition is attempting to uncover new evidence while also using modern science to re-examine some old clues. Anatomy and anthropology professor Jeff Meldrum has examined the gathered evidence, including this photo of a three-toed footprint cast taken near Falk in 1971. I'm not familiar with any recognized uh, genetic mutation that could be fixed in a population that would produce a consistent three-toed track. His conclusion? the very real possibility that they're simply hoaxed footprints. Meldrum has also analyzed some additional recent hand and footprint tracks found by the Monster Quest team in Texas. There are features which are interesting but are not conclusive in differentiating this track and handprint, associated handprint, uh, from a human source. Meldrum says that the print and tracks can be explained as likely coming from a human. What he can't explain is how it got near a cold riverbank in the middle of winter. It's hard to imagine a population of feral humans just living out in the woods of uh, Arkansas or Oklahoma or East Texas and uh, walking around barefoot in a uh, flowing stream in sub-freezing temperatures. But on the other hand, it's also an unpalatable position uh, or proposition for many people that there's a feral population of unrecognized primates in the woods of East Texas as well. The reports of this unknown beast have circulated in Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma for decades. The eyewitness reports became the basis for the movie The Legend of Boggy Creek over three decades ago. And our expedition team is still looking for answers.
Rick Knoll led a team of investigators in the Boggy Creek area and feels the expedition was a positive step towards revealing the Swamp Stalker. First, they used a criminal investigations tactic and sprayed the riverbanks with a small particle reagent chemical. Knoll feels further use of the procedure will have results. I'm glad to finally get the SPR reagent out in the field and um, to test it on this type of research with the ultraviolet laser. We got mixed results because it was a new technology and the crew really needs to work with it more in the field before they perfect the methodology. Next, Noel set camera traps in the area, but this time with a unique technological twist. The 360 camera is still in its infancy. Noel uses a special software program to unwrap the extreme angle lens. We did get some pictures with the 360 lens, although I think it's all inconclusive right now. I plan on using the 360 lens in the field a lot more. Uh, there's some different ways of using it and we just barely scratch the surface. So first and use this memory card. The team also placed camera traps which yeah. reveal some activity that may explain why they were unable to find the Swamp Stalker. Pictures are starting to come up now. Oh, what's that one? Uh, well, that's one of the hunters that are parked down the road. Looks like a girl hunter walking through your camp. Got her gun with her. This means the expedition's best chance for evidence of the creature from Boggy Creek still lies in the lab. Parasite expert Dr. Vassil Tkach performed extensive DNA testing on the scat the team gathered to determine the identity of the animal that left it. Although the sample was old, he succeeded in obtaining amplified DNA after three attempts. Then using a high-powered compound microscope to catch analyze the specimen for parasites. There were numerous eggs of uh, around worms belonging to the ascarid family, very common parasites of pigs and humans, although they're totally different species and they cannot be transmitted from pigs to humans and vice versa. The DNA analysis will likely confirm the identity. This is a so-called alignment, anyway. It's a comparison of sequences of many different pigs and wild boars from various parts of the United States with two sequences that are obtained from this particular sample. They are matching very well. DNA analysis confirms to catch a suspicion. The scat is from a wild boar or feral hog. The team identified another hotspot in the Wachita Mountains of Oklahoma. Using special cameras that transmitted photos and video back to base camp, they were able to capture various species of wildlife. And then the following morning, we have this bobcat. Mm -hmm. That's a cool picture. The cameras that transmit photos allowed them to be more stealth in their approach. Because the cameras do not require as much maintenance, animals are undisturbed, allowing more activity to be photographed. The abundance of wildlife living in these mountains, woods, and bayous means there is a lot of prey available and confirms this is a likely home for the Swamp Stalker. And those who have seen this large, hairy animal that walks upright on two legs believe visual sightings offer proof of its own. We have different kinds of footprints, some with five toes, some with three toes. Uh, we have, as far as we can see, not very much physical evidence of these creatures. So we really have to rely on the history, uh, the traditions, and the eyewitness accounts. We had a number of vocalizations that were, that were around our, our campsite, and uh, they were pretty dramatic uh, vocalizations, close and uh, that was one of the most memorable experiences I think that any of us had. I used to uh, ride my four-wheeler and stuff like that down through the mountains without any protection at all. Now I don't. It has changed my whole way of uh, life in the mountains.